I really wanted Shane Wright at first, and I just want you to know that I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun. The one time I decide not to go watch a Habs game in Buffalo, Uri Slavkovsky does that. <laughs> Slavy buddy. Oh, I love this kid. I really love this kid. Even though I said I should, we should have drafted him all along, and I was always right the whole time. What's up, you guys? Good morning. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. What a game that was. Oh, I, I just think of the people that I know that were at the game, and... Uh, my gosh, like that was so much enter more entertaining than the game I went to when Jake Allen stood on his head and David Savard stood on one skate and helped defend the Habs. Oh my goodness, man, that was awesome. And uh, in the beginning of this game, it, it, I watched the whole game, by the way. I had to go back because if it's a game that I was supposed to be at, I don't know, I just want to take in the whole experience as much as I can. So I rewatched the entire game from front to back and uh, it was way more entertaining after the first period, especially than I expected it to be. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's just go right down through the, like from front to back. Let's, let's get into it because this was a fun one. You guys first period Montreal takes three penalties and somehow they're able to kill it off with Caden Primo's help in net a statement game for Caden Primo showing again, even though he had a tough game the last time out and his save percentage was not good. And he let in up. What was it? Five goals. And uh, this time he comes in, and he gets himself a 958 save percentage in this game, 46 saves. And he actually got a penalty. He actually got a penalty in the first period of this game. He got a tripping call. And thankfully, the Canadians helped to kill it off. But in the first period, the Habs had to kill off three penalties. And it wasn't until the second period where things really started to pick up and get interesting in this game. And as we know, let's go to the uh, the penalty summary here. Uh, in the first period, Kov Kovacevic, Primo, and Caden Gooley getting the penalties. And uh, this is when the Habs um, really not took over, but they basically came alive after uh, what was it, Eric Robinson, who I had a Sabres fan friend tell me, fringe NHLer. Sorry, fringe AHLer at best. And he comes in after being traded to the Sabres for a seventh round pick and checks Justin Barron from behind into the boards. Now, I will say that after watching it several, several times over, it seemed like Justin Barron was almost like waiting to be hit in a way. Like he he did kind of anticipate it, right? It, and I don't feel like he had the right angle on it and therefore took the brunt of it. And then Justin Barron's a young player, but I do feel like he could have protected himself a bit better. I will agree with that. However... Uh, Justin Barron takes a hit from behind and Robinson gets five in a game and he gets thrown out of the game and the Canadians go on a five minute power play and it didn't take very long. And then our guy, Jaden Struble, <laughs> Jaden Struble gets his first NHL goal on a read on a play that you love seeing a defensive make because it was a give and go with Jonathan Kovacevic, Arbor Jack guy's buddy. And in his place right now, Jaden Struble with a give and go he goes down, he puts a beautiful tip past his buddy from Northeastern, Devin Levi, who he texted before the game and told him, you got to let me get my first tonight. And Devin Levi texted him back and said, no chance. And then you're welcome. Thanks, Devin. We appreciate, we appreciate you letting it happen anyway, whether you meant to or not. So Jaden Struble gets the Habs off to the lead and a uh, beautiful first NHL goal for him. You could hear him cheering on the TV. It was awesome. And 14 seconds later, 14 seconds later, El Capitan himself, you know who I'm talking about. I just want to throw it. I just want to give Nick some love. I just want to give him some love. So Nick Suzuki coming in and the slingshot or drop pass actually works. I think it's worked a couple times now. And Nick Suzuki gets the drop pass from Mike Matheson. And he just goes all the way through the Sabres defenders. And he snipes it short side on Devin Levi. Within 14 seconds, Habs are up to nothing. Thank you to Mr. Eric Robinson. We appreciate it. And then uh, the Habs probably could have got a third goal on that power play. There was at least two and a half or more minutes left, and they couldn't make it three nothing. But regardless, they go into the third period feeling pretty good about themselves from an overall standpoint. And that's where, again, things got interesting. And uh, in the third period, Habs go on the power play again after a Tage Thompson interference call. They don't capitalize on it. Uri Slavkovsky. This is the fighting penalty. This ha happened later in the game. I'm going to get to that in a second. I'm going to get to that in a second. 
But uh, when you think about how the Sabres got back into this game, who else would it have been besides Habs killer Jeff Skinner, Skinner, who just absolutely always finds a way to score against us. He scored against us last game I was at. I can think of goals right off the top of my head that he has scored against us, and he just he does it often. So and so does Brendan Gallagher. So Brendan Gallagher he got has the Sabres numbers, and he had Jeff Skinner's number at the end of the game with that little cross check. Um, and Skinner over exaggerated and tried to draw an extra penalty after getting tripped. But anyways, Jeff Skinner from Tage Thompson. It was a nice play where he kicked it to himself, kicked the puck to himself, and just buried his short side on uh, Caden Primo. And then not that long after, Kyle Pozo gets his 600th career NHL point. He was noticeable in this game too. Kyle Pozo, captain of the Buffalo Sabres. His fourth goal of the season from Connor Clifton, who we'll also get to in a second. But uh, Marty St. Louis, not happy, not very happy after the Kyle Pozo goal. So he calls a timeout and he gives the Habs, he gives the boys the gears. And you could see it on camera. I cannot repeat what he said, but uh, he told the boys to wake up in a very nice way. So Marty St. Louis fired up and Justin Barron, uh, despite having good success this season, had a pretty bad giveaway on the Kyle Opozo goal. He loses possession, and then basically Connor Clifton gets a shot on it, and then Kyle Opozo finishes it. And frankly, on the Jeff Skinner play, it was I don't know that it was Justin Barron's fault, but I know that it was definitely his fault on the Kyle Opozo goal. And uh didn't have himself the best game. I'm hard on I was hard on Justin Barron and then had an awkward meeting with him where <laughs> I told him I was his friend. And he gave me the silent treatment because he knew he obviously watches. But uh <laughs> I'm kidding. But Anyway, Justin Barron has had has still has these moments where he has these little lapses and coughs the puck up, and he's got to clean that stuff up. But otherwise, he's been pretty good. He's been pretty good this season. So it's 2-2 in this game, and then you know things get more physical. And then with just a few minutes left to go in regulation, it's 2-2. And all of a sudden, Uri Slavkovsky, and if you watch the replay very closely, and I, I saw this from Mark Dumont on X or Twitter, Gets a little bit of a low blow underneath, like behind the play, as the Habs are on the power play still, actually. And it's from Connor, it's from Connor Clifton. Let's go to the penalties here, and we see that Uri Slavkovsky and Connor Clifton drop the gloves. Clifton gets a couple shots in on Slav, but he doesn't back down, and he doesn't have his buddy Arbor Jack Eye to back him up. So this got Slavkovsky more emotionally engaged in a game than we've ever seen, and so much so. And he finished it off. We're going to get to that in a second also. But the fact that Slav didn't back down, he was more physical. He's been more physical in every single game. You're noticing him a lot more. Him, Suzuki, and Caulfield are playing very well together. They're getting a lot of chances. Caulfield had over nine shots in this game and was pissed when he didn't convert on some of those opportunities, right? Nick Suzuki obviously did convert. And Slav had opportunities at the very end of this game on the power play to convert. He took a couple more shots in this game also. He's just playing so much better overall and seems to be developing at the NHL level, though I hear from some of you guys often, the NHL is not a development league. I understand that, but he is developing well right now at the NHL level. And Slavkovsky gets engaged in a fight and comes out, you know, with a little scar on his face, as we saw here, but uh, not disappointed because you see the smiles at the end of it, right? And then we go to overtime. And the Canadians, this is where the Brendan Gallagher cross check comes in, but it was actually Christian Dvorak who trips Jeff Skinner. He goes off for tripping at the end of the game at 1854. And the Canadians are able to kill it off in overtime also. And there's no whistle. So it remains four on four. The, the fans got gypped in overtime because three on three is pretty darn exciting and stressful sometimes. But because the Habs kill off the penalty, they, uh, Christian Duvar comes out of the penalty box and it's four on four for basically the remainder of overtime. And Caden Primo, Devin Levi, Devin Levi made a huge save on Cole Caulfield. We got to acknowledge that one also. There were some great saves in this game on both ends, but Devin had the game saver on Caulfield and Caulfield slammed the door when he didn't score near the end of the game. But after overtime, the shootout actually was the most entertaining shootout I've seen in a long time. And I'm still for possibly scrapping the shootout altogether. It's fun when it works in your favor, obviously, but the shootout was pretty fun. We get Tage Thompson and Nick Suzuki getting stopped by Caden Primo and Devin Levi to start the shootout. Victor Olofsson comes in with a vintage Olofsson move. He goes shelf on Caden Primo, and then 
Cole Caulfield and totally redeems himself, dumb and dumber reference, and goes five hole on Devin Levi to tie the shootout. Then we get Owen Power, who I guess was one for one coming into this game. Caulfield was 0 for 4 thus far this season, or 0 for 3. This was his first time converting the season in the shootout. So we get Owen Power coming down and basically doing the exact same thing in slow motion on Caden Primo. He goes five hole. And then we need Yessi Ulinen to keep the Canadians alive. He does that because, as you guys have mentioned, sick mitts in the shootout, sick mitts in tight. Ulinen's been playing very, very well also. I got to mention that. He's got a great shot. And I got to say that the second power play unit actually looked dangerous against the Sabres in this game. And I like that Slava on the first power play unit. Thank you, Lord. We all are happy to see that on top of him being on the top line with Suzuki and Caulfield. But after that, Ulinen scores a beautiful goal. J.J. Paterka gets stopped, and then our boy Uri Slavkovsky comes down. He does basically the same move he did against San Jose, only he hit the post in San Jose in the shootout, and he buries it past Devin Levi. Are you not entertained? Or the Bret Hart entrance, I don't know what you want to call it, but what a finish. What a finish to this game, you guys. Uri Slavkovsky getting the chance to win it for the Habs in the shootout for the first time ever. And uh, that was a blast. That was a lot of fun. I wish I could say I was there, but it did kind of still feel like I was there in spirit because I watched the game front to back. And um, I really enjoyed it. I got to say, my boy, Uri Slavkovsky, ah, feels good, you guys. It feels good. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. I even like Josh Anderson's game. You know, as much as he got opportunities early in this game too, Sean Monaghan played good. You know, um, I thought the whole lineup played pretty good overall. Jaden Struble getting his first NHL goal, like I mentioned. Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki. <laughs> That's like Yuppie and Suzuki together. Nick Suzuki. You heard it here first. But uh, I just want to look at the ice time for a second and just a couple of stats. But Caulfield, nine shots on goal. I was not kidding you. Oh, my goodness. Caden Primo standing on his head. A lot of good stories in this game. So the Canadians, again, find a way in Buffalo. They find a way in Buffalo. We've seen a lot of wins in that building. And it got pretty emotional back and forth in this game at times. So it was entertaining to say the least. Leave your comment down below. We are right back at it against Nashville tonight. They're going to be coming in ticked off after getting shut out for nothing against the Leafs, but who cares because we're ready for them, right? Let's go. Thank you for watching you guys. Thank you for supporting the channel. Hit like, hit subscribe. If you haven't already coming close to 5,000 subscribers on this channel, which is still mind blowing. And I thank you for it. I thank you. We'll see you guys soon. All my best. Go Habs. Go.